Hello, and thank you for checking out this video. Uh, my name is Bruce Cullen. I am the Director of Products here at Cookdown. And today I'm going to talk to you about our ServiceNow Discovery product and show you a bit about how it works. Um, but just to set the stage quickly, um, you've obviously heard of ServiceNow, um, but have you heard of Microsoft's SCOM or System Center Operations Manager to give it its full title? Uh, it's a Microsoft monitoring tool best of breed um, for its kind of tool and the general premise is it has agents all around your network and uh, when something goes wrong with one of the technologies that it's monitoring it will send an alert um, pretty straightforward kind of concept very complicated in its implementation it's been around for a very long time and it's a very powerful product um, obviously as i said earlier you'll know about service now uh, it's a really great IT ticketing system, among other things. Uh, and the whole premise of the tool, um, for our purpose anyway, is uh, end user sees an issue, historic traditionally. They'll ring up the, uh, the help desk and an issue gets raised in service now, and, uh, uh, which gets rooted around until it finds the right person to fix it. Um, to, to us, it would seem pretty logical to join dots between these two systems. And that's where our cookdown connector comes in. So our Cookdown SCOM connector is all about integrating those SCOM alerts to let you automatically raise incidents um, rather than waiting for somebody to ring up the help desk and tell you something's wrong. Um, we have a discovery tool, which is all about populating ServiceNow's what's called CMDB, Configuration Management Database, with configuration items. Uh, the whole idea of the CMDB is it's a... Uh, picture as to what your IT estate looks like. And the more accurate your CMDB, the quicker it is for your incidents to get resolved because you can e more easily route them to the right team. Um, but populating that CMDB is notoriously difficult um, with a, sort of the traditional approach, uh, which is either, you know, people stood around whiteboards, which is error prone, or with uh, a network crawling type tool, which work very well, where they have access to everything. Um, but if they don't, they, they fail to discover things and you, you end up with an incomplete picture. SCOM, by virtue of what it does, has agents all around your network. And uh, so has already overcome that problem. And it has a lot of data at its disposal in the form of its objects. And we, we join the dots there. And that's the tool we're going to be talking about today. We also have a mapping product, which is all about joining the dots in between those individual configuration items in your CMDB to form business or application services in ServiceNow uh, with a mapping tool. Uh, our mapping tool also uses those SCOM agents, so it doesn't suffer those security issues. Um, today, as I say, we're going to be focusing on the discovery solution. So uh, to set the stage for this, on the left-hand side, you have SCOM, and on the right hand side, you have ServiceNow. So SCOM has a database filled with objects. ServiceNow has a CMDB filled with configuration items or not, depending on how far into discovery you've got. Um, our discovery tool uh, comes in. We scan the SCOM objects, match against existing configuration items in your ServiceNow instance by ServiceNow's identification and reconciliation API. Um, which is good and important because um, rather than us reinventing the wheel or using some other method, this is ServiceNow's recommended tooling and approach for uh, populating your CMDB with CIs. Um, so identification and reconciliation, uh, if it doesn't find a match against an existing CI, we'll create a CI with the data that we provide. And if there is a match, the existing CI is updated with new information. So we enrich existing CIs as well. So the key question, so great, but what can I discover from SCOM? The answer is straightforward. It's anything that SCOM monitors. So this can be anything through from your sort of standard Windows server technologies through to cloud things like Azure. Um, there's management packs for SCOM to monitor bits of the, uh, infrastructure like VMware and databases like Oracle, um, pretty much if SCOM can monitor it, we can discover it and push it up into ServiceNow. Um, that's enough slides. Uh, let's go and dig into the thing and see how it looks and works. So this is the SCOM console, unsurprisingly. Uh, if I scroll down to the bottom, you will see a discovery option down here. This is our management pack. 
uh, which is our discovery solution. It's also the alert integration, the alert sync product is here too, but we're just going to focus on discovery today. And you will see a bunch of what are called payloads in here. So these payloads are basically mappings between SCOM object and ServiceNow CI. Um, they are defined in the JSON format, which is the format that ServiceNow's identification and reconciliation API is expecting to receive them in. Really important point. Um, we give you a wizard to help create these things. And I'm going to take you through that process today for the case of database, which is I've already done, but just to show you what it looks like. So um, if I go up to the top right corner and go create discovery, the first question uh, if you have our mapping product uh, installed, which I do, is you're asked, do you want to um, map an application effectively? For this one, I'm going to say no, because we're talking about discovery. Uh, you're then asked to pick a sample object from SCOM. So we're going to look at databases. So I'm obviously going to pick a database from SCOM. So let me find the database class from the drop down list here. Database, there it is. Any old one is fine. Um, now, the thing that's important here is not the actual objects that you pick, but the class that that object belongs to from SCOM. So this database belongs to the MS SQL on Windows database class. Now, <clears throat> because SCOM it has a hierarchy in its object model, we give keys, what we call keys, which represent the properties of this database for the database itself. That's these guys here. But because uh, SCOM has a hierarchical uh, model, those databases can't live in isolation. They sit on top of a database engine. And we know that from SCOM by traversing its relationships. So we've given you the properties or keys for the database engine itself as well. And if I continue to scroll down the list, you'll see uh, classes for Windows computer in here, you, which is the computer on which that database instance uh, exists. You'll see cluster keys in here as well. You get the idea. Um, SCOM has a hierarchy. We mine the properties for the object and anything in its hierarchy. Now, um, I've touched on the concept of keys um, at a really high level there, but essentially these keys represent the properties of the objects in each class in SCOM. So in this case, my ops 16 db, these are the keys that represent the properties. Um, they're relatively easy to read in terms of the key structure, but we give you the display name of the property itself from SCOM um, as well. And the, the way I find this easiest to read is by looking at the sample values. So we pull the value from these properties for this object. So it's with these building blocks that you will build these payloads. Um, so to show you how these payloads are actually built, we're going to switch to ServiceNow now. And we're going to find a tool in here called the Identification Simulator. Uh, it's not, a, not a, a tool from Cookdown, it's part of ServiceNow itself. Um, and it's a very powerful tool, Identification Simulator, here it is. So this tool is designed to build or validate these JSON payloads. Um, it's built on the premise that you'll be pushing up JSON payloads for a single object or a single database or database and its sort of dependents uh, rather than using it with our product, but it will do um, just fine for our product. So once we've selected a discovery source, we select a ServiceNow CI class. This is what we're going to map our SCOM class to. So I'm going to pick the SQL database class. So the first thing that this shows you is that the database class doesn't exist in isolation in ServiceNow's CMDB. It has to depend on this class here, the Microsoft SQL instance class. So you can't simply push up databases. You have to push up databases with their instance. It also tells you that that instance can't, can't live in isolation. It has to live on something. Um, and it lets, lets you pick uh, what ServiceNow CI class you want that instance to be related to. I'm going to pick the Windows Server class. And there you go. So we have three levels in this payload we're going to create. The next thing you'll notice is that for each of the classes, we are uh, we this tool will tell you from your ServiceNow CMDB how 
Incoming CIs are identified as unique based on the identification and reconciliation rules. And these are the options available to me. This is a, a, a blank ServiceNow instance. So there's no weird modifications here. All of this is out of the box. ServiceNow, this is a, a New York version of ServiceNow. So I'm going to pick uh, the database and this class name to identify based on. And this tool is, is expecting a database name. So it's expecting, you know, op, what is it, op 16 db in here and um, a class. So let me just pick one just so you can see what this tool will do. There we go. So these are these are the bare minimum in terms of criterion attributes uh, or attributes of this class that we need to push up a CI. But from this uh, additional attributes drop down, you will see all of the other properties that we can push data up into. So let's just for a second pick FQDN and provide an FQDN. And we're going to do the same for the SQL instance same idea for all CI classes. So for this one, um, it's asking for a uh, for a, a class name and an instance name. I'm just going to put anything in here for a second just to uh, build out a payload and show you how this tool works. Same idea for Windows Server. Um, and then when you filled in all of the, the boxes here, uh, you get a generate script button that appears up here. If there's an error in what you've provided, let's say, let's just take out the instance name here, and try and generate a script, it will error and say, hey, there's some data missing, which is really important, not just because I could have missed a field like that. But if there's a field that isn't required for identification, but is required by your CMDB, so let's say um, asset number or something, um, then it will error and it will say, hey, um, you need to provide some data for this field for this CI class. So it helps you uh, work around understand the customizations in your ServiceNow instance. But as long as you've got all of the data in here, when you hit generate script, you will see your JSON payload, which is the same kind of idea as um, what we've got in the SCOM console that I was showing you earlier. So as I said earlier, this tool is designed for specific CIs. Um, so Ops 16 DB, for example, but we are going to use this, this product with the Cookdown discovery keys. So if I go back to the SCOM console now and go back to my discovery wizard, here it is, um, in the database name field, rather than me specifying ops 16 db, I'm going to provide the key um, for that property. So here it is. And for the FQDN, I'm going to find, um, there isn't an FQDN is a bad example, to be honest, because databases don't have an FQDN, um, but you get the idea. Um, similarly, similarly, for the SQL instance class, we're going to find the key for the instance name. Oh, instance name, there we go. Instance name. Um, and you get the idea. We're building out this the same payload with these keys rather than the specific values. So when I hit generate script, you'll see that's what we've got here. Um, so I can copy that script out of here and paste it into service now. Um, rather than make you guys watch me build one of these things out for real, although this isn't actually that far off, I'm going to copy one that I have already created. So this is one I'm going to copy. And go back to the discovery wizard. So once you've built your payload in the simulator, you'd come in here and you'd hit next and you'd be asked for your template, your payload template, which is what you built in the simulator. So this is one I've built earlier. So uh, exactly the same idea, database class in ServiceNow. Um, I've picked a bunch of properties. So the database uh, uh, attribute in ServiceNow, and I've given it a cookdown discovery key. You can tell it's a real key because it goes green. Um, if it were not a real key, if I just smash some text in there, it, it, it goes to black. You get the idea. Um, the other thing that's worth highlighting here is so uh, on line seven here, the short description field, I've used multiple keys and I've mixed them in with actual text. So I, um, in the case of collation, the database collation, there is no um, field out of the box to put that data into, but it's a, a great piece of useful information. Uh, when you're 
trying to understand what's going on with with the database <clears throat> so i've specified it in the short description same with the recovery model uh, you get the idea the other thing uh, the other thing that's important about these payloads um, and why it's really good to build these payloads using the simulator is the relationship types between these ci's which is defined in your cmdb is given for you in most cases so contains contained by runs on runs etc once you're happy with your payload you hit the validate payload button and if it's incorrect json you'll get a, uh, an error but otherwise it will say yes that's fine and then you hit next when you hit next you see for the selected sample objects which was that ops 16 database we replace those keys with the actual values here so here we go these are the actual values um, here um, so in reality, when you when you run this discovery for real, it's not going to apply only to this single database. It's going to be uh, we're going to run this this JSON payload through our engine, and for all SCOM objects of the class that we picked, the MS SQL on Windows database class, we're going to do this for. So this gives you an idea of what you'll end up with in ServiceNow. If I hit next. You'll ask for details about your ServiceNow instance, the instance name from which we automatically generate the instance URL, the discovery source that ingested CIs should have set on them. This needs to be set up in ServiceNow. And then the timeout, so how long should this discovery run for before timing out? Um, good kind of fail safe mechanism in case uh, something goes wrong. And you would hit next, see a summary, and hit create discovery. I'm not going to do that in this case because I already have this discovery in my in my list. Here it is. Um, and there we go. That's how you'd set up Cookdown Discovery. So you do that for all of the different classes um, available to you. Um, but to make this process a bit easier for the sort of standard Windows technologies, we've actually done this for you. So if I just go to our um, payload store quickly, I'll show you what's available. So here we go. This is the discovery payload library. Um, the link is on our support um, page, support.cookdown.com. And um, it is basically a repository of these JSON payloads. There's a bit of information on how they work, but for sort of standard Windows technologies, um, you can use or customize these payloads to get you off the ground. So um, yeah, there's a whole bunch to kind of get you going. Um, but equally, there'll be weird and wonderful uh, management packs for SCOM. Maybe you've written some custom ones over the years that you want to extract data from. So once you have um, set these up, you could select the one you want to run and hit run discovery here on the right hand side. Uh, there's also the ability to schedule these discoveries. Um, and then if we go through to service now, look at some examples of some that we have pushed up to service now um, let's start with sql because we're looking at that one so this is an example of our sql instance here you can see from the relationship it runs on a windows server and contains databases if i have a look at the dependency view you'll get a feel for how this works so there's the instance there are 12 databases running on this instance um, and it runs on this Windows server. You can see using the other discoveries I had, um, there's a Windows service on here. We've identified the network adapters, etc. All of this has come from SCOM. Um, cool, looks good. Um, the other use case, uh, the use case, the other example I have to show you here is IIS web server. So um, we're looking at the CI for an IIS web server. You can see it runs on a, a Windows box and that some websites run on it. Again, now in dependency view, you can see what it looks like here. Um, so you've got the websites running on the web server, running on the Windows server, um, with a reference to the network adapter. Um, you can also see that this particular website is part of an application service, which I found using our mapping products, which I will go into in a, in a different video later down the line. Um, but here we go, this is the result. Um, it's a pretty simple, product to use once you've kind of got it set up. There isn't that much to do to set it up. It's simply a management pack that goes into SCOM. Uh, you create some uh, service, a service account in ServiceNow and you configure a CMDB 
uh, discovery source, so it's clear that the CIs created came from us. We push the CIs up to the identification and reconciliation API, so all of the cookdown magic is in SCOM rather than in ServiceNow. Um, so that's how it works. The only other thing I wanted to show in this video is to show you go to, going to our partner test instance here, um, how easy it is to populate your CMDB. So I'm going to go to my CMDB in this ServiceNow instance and it's blank, nothing to see. Um, in my discovery product in, in, uh, in SCOM, I have two instances defined. I've got my partner test instance and my cookdown instance. So if I select these guys and hit run discovery, uh, we will push up CIs for all of these classes. Um, and that should be all it takes to populate my CMDB. So discoveries are submitted as SCOM tasks. So if I hit OK on this and go uh, to monitoring and go to task status, what you should see it's a bunch of um, a bunch of discoveries running in the form of tasks, uh, which will be pushing CIs up into ServiceNow. I'm going to now go back to ServiceNow and hit refresh and see if the CIs are starting to appear. So here we go. I can see that the CIs are starting to flow in, which is great. There we go, in they come. You get the idea. Um, because all of the hard work in terms of discovery is done by SCOM, it's simply a case of translating SCOM as classes into ServiceNow CI classes and pushing them all up. Um, so let's have a look at some now. A AD domain controller, why not? Let's have a look at that one. So we've got the AD domain controller itself. We've got some cool information about it. And we've got that it runs on this particular Windows server, for example. What else have we got? Uh, Windows Server. Let's see what we've got for the Windows Server in my payload. So we get the idea, um, information about its operating system, DNS, uh, details of it from AD, how much RAM it's got, um, what runs on it. That's because I've pushed things up with other uh, discoveries. I've, I, I've pushed up its network adapter too with a discovery. Um, and you get the idea. We have a populated CMDB. One last refresh, 56 CIs, there you go, which is about the size of my small little lamp. Windows cluster, let's look at that last one, because that's quite a nice little one. So Windows cluster of cluster nodes. Um, we've defined the cluster resources as well. We've actually pushed the cluster resource groups up um, here. Um, it's a very simple and very powerful product. It can handle uh, any form of customization, both in SCOM and in ServiceNow. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, if you haven't customized ServiceNow in any real way in terms of identification and reconciliation or um, custom attributes, then you can take our out of the box uh, payloads and get populating in a day. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so that's all I have to show you. So thank you very much for listening. And if you want to take a trial of this product, we give 30 day free trials. You just head over to cookdown.com and there is a free trial form there. Um, equally, if you want a more in-depth uh, demo or would like to ask some questions on our discovery page, there are forms for all of this stuff. Um, so here we go, free trial form, technical information and uh, everything you need to kind of get going in the form of setup instructions on our support site. Um, all right, so thank you very much for the time today and uh, I hope you tune into a future video soon. Thank you.